pretty bad uh, for a few days, and I really I didn't do any workouts for eight days after after that um, because uh, yeah, like I said, I mean I just got kicked really hard. Usually you don't feel that in a race, you know, um, but this was like I mean for about 200 meters in the race, it was very early on. I was like, oh man, this hurts really bad, and then it went away. But it was uh, it, it was a little bit worrisome having to have the two. Uh, just over two weeks before the, the absolutely yeah that was this, this is first goal of the year for me at Chicago Marathon and then uh, this is uh, making the world championship team was the second goal and so um, yeah I mean this is this was the next most important thing for me is to make this team and to do really well at, uh, in Moscow we've seen you train in the heat before before the Olympics with marathon and all that. so I mean, how comfortable were you out there today uh, it's not comfortable. I mean, it's hot. You know, we did everything. We did a ton of um, acclimatization. You know, that we well, everything that we could do up in Park City. It was warm but dry, so we had to do a lot of stuff. And um, you know, to tell you the truth, before this, I was really feeling bad, like like warming up and stuff. I thought maybe I ate something bad, but it was. Um, you know, I just think I drank so much, you know, thinking of the heat and stuff that my stomach was upset, you know, I thought I was going to throw up, so I was a little bit worried warming up, but, um, you know, once I got out there, got a few laps at 72s, it kind of let me, you know, get rid of it, so. Well, so you have the marathon training plans on hold for a bit? They're not on hold, this is the plan the whole time, I mean, I, I this is, this did, this was good for me last year to, to come to the marathon off from a track base, real intensity, and I mean, I ran 207 last year, like, light years away where I was then and and so that's the same thing it's the nine weeks from the world championships to Chicago again and I'm going to use that same plan again so now when we, when we came into this meet we were talking crew you Rob Derek I mean what was what was your confidence level coming like into, into the race I, I really believe that I was going to win the race I mean I've been training that good and um you know, I don't have the flat out raw speed the Galen does, but uh, I know that my, you know, that power um, has been there, and uh, I've been having the best workouts I've had in, you know, four years. So, um, you know, I just I'm piling on in one year from last year, it makes a huge difference for me. And so, last year I had to rebuild myself completely. I mean, I was hurt for two years, and I really I didn't run at all for six months. So, you know, I was just trying to piece piece my career back together. This year, um, I got a big foundation, a big big uh, base to build off from, and. So going into the fall, you know, the summer and fall, I, I think that uh, I hope big things happen. So you said you thought you were going to win the race? Yeah. I mean, I'd... I'm kind of surprised you said that, just because Galen's silver medalist. But does that bode well for Moscow? I mean, you're yeah. working out with him, and it's a, Mo, do you, are you starting to see things in workouts, or do you not compare yourself to them? Or it's different, yeah, yeah for me. You know, like I don't have, I don't, I can't run 50 second intervals at the end of uh, the workouts, but I've closed the gap down to where I can run 53, 54. And I can do the long, you know, longer intervals, thousands, you know, thousands of miles as good as them, and I can do the long stuff better. I mean, so I know that, you know, for me ultimately, yeah, best case scenario, Moscow. I think I could medal if, if the pace was hot and fast, you know. But you have to have that confidence going in too, you know. And um, I've been six before, and so um, I have to make a big improvement for get from six to top three. But the way I've been training, that's the way I'm thinking, you know, and, and uh, still ultimately, you know, it's on the path to Chicago at the end of the year, and so that's not the, uh, the so much the end goal, right. you know, for me, but um, but that's something to step along the way, and so that just, I think, I think I have that confidence right now. In terms of today, we... Did you talk to Alberto before? Was that your plan to kind of take it with about a mile to go? Or? Yeah, um, you know, we kind of had a sliding scale about how fast the race was. If it was, we talked last night a little bit. We, we originally we said, you know, two to three laps to go. We're going to really put it. That's how confident I was in my closing speed. Um, but you know, last night I said, you know, it might be a 30-minute race, and so I don't feel confident with two to three laps to go. And so, you know, I think we kind of just said, you know, if it's a 29-minute race, it's five to six laps to go. You know, down, you know, all, all the way down. You know, if it's 28 minute race, two laps to go, but that's just, you know, it was a sliding scale. So I, I knew once the first few miles got going, it was going to be five to six laps out. Are you just talking with Alberto or is Galen there too? And you guys are all talking together? No, or? we didn't talk. Me and Galen didn't talk about it at all. It's just me and You kind of figured he'd probably just wait to the end, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, if I was him, I wouldn't. I mean, the guy can run 50 seconds, you know, in intervals in practice, so why would, you know, why would he do that? I mean, it's not like last year where. You know, he he could help me out, and it was probably it was his best interest too. Right. You know, this year I could do it on my own. I could stand on my own two feet, and so um, you know we're friends and training partners, but we're competitors on race day, and so um, yeah, I mean 
there's every man for himself. Is that encouraging to you to kind of his... He seems to have found another gear at the end of races. Are you thinking, hey, maybe I could... Yeah, you know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm better at kicking now than I was earlier in my career at 30, you know, and, um, you know, I've seen Mo get, you know, get better with age, and uh, I just feel I feel faster and fitter and stronger than before, and um, I maybe, uh, I mean, I said before, maybe this is my last year on the track, but I don't, I don't know, I'm running really well right now, so um, I'm going to keep, you know, my focus on the marathon, but right now, shoot, I just want, I'm just enjoying it, I'm doing good, and having fun and competing. And he's not much about Moscow? I mean, you could get decent weather there in the summer, like 70s, I think, or... Yeah, you know, and I think, shoot, it could be... even, maybe? could be... I mean, that's a bucket list for me, 27 right. minutes, you know, and yeah. so that's the only opportunity for me this year. So if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I don't, you know, it's fine. I'm running well enough that I think I'll be running... Hopefully I could run well, you know, for another couple of years still, and, you know, that's always a goal that I can still have, but... Right. Um, I mean, Berlin, would you run about 27-20? 27-22. I mean, it was warm. Berlin, yeah, it was, it was really hot. hot. Seven, I mean, you need a better weather in Moscow, I'm thinking. Could be better, and the rate, the pace was there was really slow for the first half, you know, and so they might take it out fast this year. You know, they haven't been able to beat Mo and Galen in a kick, so, you know, that'd be beneficial for me. Then, then I'm going to be the one stalking uh, Mo and Galen, I think, for most of the race, if that's the case. Good luck. Good luck. Right,